and regulations. Usually, we always start with the cup and the towels and the bowing. So today, I'm going to turn it around. We're going to start with all other rules and regulations. If we have time, then we'll cover the cups and the towels and the bowing. Okay? So what are rules and regulations? Every place has rules and regulations. Every country, every city, every home, okay? Even on the road, there are rules and regulations, right? If it's red light, we stop. If it's green light, we go, right? Otherwise, it will be chaotic. So this morning, I'm driving from my house, get to the corner. It was green light, so it's my light to go. So at the curb is this young girl, maybe 20-something, with what? Your headphone. She doesn't look at the light. Every time I'm about to press the gas, she would take her foot forward. I would stop. This went on three to four times. Then finally, I honk at her. And because I honk at her, she still doesn't look. When I honk at her, that's when she's walking, and it's my light. <laughs> okay, so just to show you, she's not following the rules and regulations. So in other words, the temple also has its own rules and regulations, right? Otherwise, everything will be in chaos. So with rules and regulations, the temple will be in order, there will be harmony and peace among everybody, okay? So let's start with um, coming into the temple. When we come in, we hand her the towel. We would put our belongings to the side and head to the altar, okay? And do what? Do the arrival prayer, okay? This is the most important thing, not to chit-chat with people, but to proceed to the altar, say hello to God and all the saints and Buddha. Just like when we enter people's home, we do the same. Say hello to the host and the hostess first. This is the same meaning. Okay. So, um, if we don't know how to do it yet, okay, first we have to memorize it ourselves. We don't have to depend on other people to do it. But if we do not know yet, uh, we should start to learn. Okay. So, uh, even though it is in Chinese. Johnny memorized it. If he can do it, we can all do it. Okay? So we use him as our role model. If he can learn, we can learn. No excuse, even though it is in Chinese. If those that do not have the uh, form to memorize come to me at the end of class, I will make copies and give you a copy. Okay? If we don't learn in this earthly realm, when we go back to heaven, five years of learning on earth would equal to 600 years in heaven. Okay, think about that. So do we want to learn on earth or do we want to learn in heaven? And there's no one teaching us in heaven. Okay, so make sure we're doing it properly and um, we can, you know, in fact, if you don't know how to do it, after lunch, we can all sit down and we can review it also. Okay, then when we come to class, we must come on time. If you are 10 minutes late, if you're in the Chinese class, they lock the door, you can't go in, okay? And it, we will be also marked as absent if you are 10 minutes late. So make sure we come on time. And the Buddhas, remember last week we were, we, we, we were learning about the recording and the reporting angel, they will be recording and reporting it, okay, that we are late, so we are not absent today, okay. Now, um, the next one is lining up on sides when we're facing the altar. In other words, when we are in the big temple, whether it's for the Tao receiving ceremony or after we cut or we're all lining up, right? The male is on that side, the female on this, uh, I mean the female on that side, the male on this side, okay. Was it a line? To me, it was not a line. It was all crooked. People stand where they want to stand, okay. And most of the time, I see them chit-chatting. 
Even though I turn around and says, no talking. When I turn my head, they're chit chatting again. Okay. This is the temple. It is very dignified. Every Body doing the koto have to respect to God and all the saints and Buddha. By us chit chatting when we are lining up on the side, it is disrespect to the Buddhas. Keep that in mind. Okay, we cannot even stand in three. Females cannot even stand in three rows straight. The line is very crooked. It would be maybe a little straighter in the front. And then towards the end of the line, it gets wider and wider and wider. Why? Because everybody has to go like this to look at what's going on at the altar. Curiosity. Okay. And they don't even move when the male is putting down the bowing cushions. Okay? It's common sense. Move. The line has to be straight and focus. All right. So let's, when we have the Dao receiving ceremony in in about uh, what 45 minutes let's line up straight this time and no chit chatting okay just cold if you notice most of us in the temple come with a uniform okay the ones that are not in uniform are the newer members but we are all we all welcome Anyone that wish to purchase a uniform, it is not expensive. But if you don't want to invest in a uniform yet, please pay attention what needs to be worn inside the temple. It must be a shirt with a collar. It must be a shirt with a sleeve. Whether it's short or long, it's your own choice. But it must have sleeve, no sleeveless and no collarless. Okay, and definitely no low cuts and no backless. Okay, no shorts. If we wear a dress, a skirt or a dress, it must be at least minimum knee length because when we bow, it rises up. No shorts allowed. For the men, white shirt, long pants, and for everybody, the shoe must be close front and back no exposed toes okay to the temple and if we have long hair to tie it in a ponytail and the reason for that is when we bow what happens when you get up that hair is all over the place okay looks like we just got out of bed any questions about the dress code and no um, loud colors or floral prints, okay? Crossing from one side of the altar to the other. When, we, let's say we want to move from this side to that side or that side to that side. When we're near the altar, we should walk with our back bent a little bit. Respect to God and the Buddhas. Whether the lamp is on or not, we still do the same. Okay? Now when it's the Tao ceremony is in progress, like I said before, line up straight, stand upright, do not lean against the wall, do not talk, and do not go in and out of that room. Once we go in, we cannot come out. So think about it. If we cannot stand too long, do not go inside. Okay. Once you're in, you gotta remain there until the end of the ceremony. Do not go in and out. Okay. Now, at the same time, those did not re receive the Tao yet, we as older members do not teach them while we are lining up. A lot of people didn't know that. And they start to teach them before the transmitter says, the introducer or the guarantor, please teach them. Okay. So we cannot teach anyone unless the transmitter tells us to. 
This is revealing heaven's secret. If we bring someone new to the temple, we must stay with them from beginning to end. Do not abandon them. Use the time to inspire and motivate them. Okay, let's say someone does, does not agree to receive the Tao. We must make sure, number one, they are not in the ceremony watching and observing and listening. We must bring them out of that room that the shades in the back must be drawn, okay? And we try to spend some time in this room to motivate them and find out exactly what is preventing them to agree to receive the Tao. Okay, because uh, it could be a simple matter that can be solved in no time. Because last year we had someone, I don't want any names, I approached them, I said, how come you don't want to receive the Tao? You know why? She goes, there's so many people, I'm so shy. I said, okay, let's have a separate ceremony after lunch, and it will just be the transmitter, me, a couple of other people, and you, and that's it, okay? And then she agreed to receive the Tao. Always find out why, the reason why, instead of just, okay, they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it, okay? Find out the reason so that they will have this opportunity, you know, for them to come into this temple at that very moment is a rare occasion. Cherish that opportunity, seize that moment, and let them understand to agree to receive the Tao, okay? Now, why do we have to stay with that new member also? Because one time last year, I was doing the three treasures, and then that person came and sat down. There's so many people, 100 people in the temple. I don't remember who received and who didn't receive. And I'm talking and talking for five minutes and already reveal the first treasure. And then I look at that person. I said, did you receive the Tao yet? No. I freaked out. I immediately came over here, grabbed somebody, take this person into another room. Okay? The person doing the three treasure is not responsible for who's sitting down. It is the person that brought the new person in, the, the introducer. They have, are the responsible party to make sure that you guide them. Okay, do not let them sit in the free treasure and do not let them be in the room where they're receiving the stuff. Okay, understood? Now, when we are, Holy Teacher says, when we are doing the three treasure, or if there's a three treasure going on in any room, do not walk through that room. Okay? Do not disrupt the people in that room. Many times I'm doing the three treasure. There's a group, always a group of people where the books are. They talk loud and louder and louder. Okay, I could not even hear my own voice, let alone the people hearing me. So they, what do they do? The audience is looking at that group of people chit-chatting and laughing out loud. I had to stop, excuse myself, go over there and tell them, this is not necessary. Okay, so in other words, um, Ty's mom, in the immortal of purification, used to tell me, when there's a sweet treasure going on, you go and sit and listen. No matter if it's English or Chinese, go and listen. This is how we learn. You grab a little bit from this person, a little bit from this person, a little bit from this person. And that's how you are able to do the three treasures. Okay? So, no matter who's doing it, even if you listen to that person 10 million times, still sit down and listen. Okay? Now, this is God's home. And everything in God's home is the property 
of the temple. It belongs to God, even if we make the donation. Once we bring something in, it no longer belongs to us. It belongs to God. Okay. So, in other words, when we take something from the temple, we must get permission from the transmitters present, or if there's no transmitters present, from the directors in charge, or in a approach the directors in charge first, and then uh, the transmitters or uh, lecturers. Okay. For example, the holy water. Holy water is the water that has been accumulated from offering to God. Okay, we don't drink it; we accumulate it. We save it in bottles. It is used to help people that are sick. So even though we know where the holy water is kept in gallons bottle, we do not just say, "Oh, I want to take some home." We have to get permission. Okay, this happened last week. That's why I brought it up. We have to get permission. Okay, so let's say we want to help somebody that is sick, or maybe we have an, our own illness. Holy Teacher says we must have good san uh, yuan, but good take good vows, take good vows. In order for that holy water to actually work on us, what are the good vows? For example, I am going to be much more filial to my parents today. For the rest of their lives, not just now, one day, for the rest of their lives, or I will be kind and good to people. I will put a smile on my face every day. These are all good vows. If we do not take good vows, and we just drink those holy water, thinking it will work on us, it will be nothing but plain tap water. Understand? Okay. So everything depends on our own heart and mind. If you want it to work, you must take good vows. Okay, again, we're talking about everything in the temple belongs to God. Now, when we use something, we must put it back where we took it from. There's a hundred people in here. If everybody take this, and for our own convenience, I'll just put down here. I don't want to run all the way down there. So the other person goes back to look. Where is the stapler? Nowhere to be found. Then what? We buy more. And more, and the, one day we found the other stapler, and it will be a whole ton of it. This place is not that big; we cannot store too many things. Stapler is small; it's okay. But what if it's a big thing? Okay, so always put things back where it belongs. Do not put it in a different place. Okay, now we have doors mark mail. And that one is marked female. Okay, the male is for the male to walk through. The female is for the female to walk through. As we all know, male and female must be separated. What if two people are walking through the male door, a, a, a male and a female, the body will hit each other, right? It's not only causing discomfort to the people involved; it's also a demerit. Okay, so we must follow what is marked. It's just like, oh, there's nobody in the men's room. Let me go to the men's room. It's the same meaning. Okay, and also, do not when we talk, do not stand in the doorways, especially after lunch. You cannot even walk through. They always love to chat right in the doorway. Stay away from the doorways. Etiquette. When a person has good manners, we want to be with them, right? 
Because what? They show respect. Right? We want to be with people that has manners. So our conduct and the proper etiquette are very important. The way we speak, the way we act. Okay, everything we do is within the Tao. So, like the true sage of great virtue, his manner all represents that. That's how we should be, just like him. The way we act, the way we speak, the way we deal with people. Okay, the way we think. It's all part of etiquette. So. Now, I have come across a situation within, I would say, the last four or five years. Before that, it wasn't existing in the temple. I noticed people push people a lot. I get pushed a lot in here, only in the temple. They would push, if I'm in their way, they just brush me off like that. Okay, this is no manners. Okay, male and female does the same. Okay. Americans were brought up here, we say what? Excuse me, that's all. Excuse me. But they don't, they just push you. Okay. This year, I start to mention it to them. Please do not push. Because when someone is not standing steadily and you push them, they will fall. This is not carpeted floor. When somebody floor, especially the elderly people, they can fracture their hips or break something. Do not push anybody. Okay. People from China has that habit. Okay. I was pushed. By male and female. And the male, I don't want to name names, push and start to push with the body against my body. It was very uncomfortable. And I turned around, I said, please do not push. Even when I'm sitting on the chair, that same person pushed my chair, pushed my chair. I almost fell down from the chair. That's when I spoke up after like so many pushes. I said, do not push me. You're pushing me when I'm sitting, I'm walking, I'm standing. You're always pushing me. You are male, I am female. This is not proper. Please do not push. So now he doesn't do it anymore. But I still see people doing it. A lot of females do that. Okay? In fact, last week I already mentioned to another person. They always push. Okay. So that's another Thing that we cannot do. When we come to the temple, people's attitudes are very important. Okay, so we must watch our own attitude toward others. With a smile. No one wants to face somebody that just glance at them. Say hello. Doesn't matter if they're Chinese or Chinese dealing with Caucasians. Doesn't matter. Hello, everybody understands. And a smile is a universal language. No words need to be spoken. It's like welcome to our temple. That's all it means. Welcome. Okay? Maintain cleanliness. This is God's home. We must maintain the cleanliness. Okay? Now, what I'm about to say may sound gross to you. But this is the fact. Keep in mind, okay, it's not to offend anybody, okay. About a year ago, either a year ago or maybe the beginning of this year, I came on a Wednesday. Immediately through that door was a very offensive smell of urine. Very bad, okay. Normally, I would go and clean the men's room first because I want to get rid of the worst job. Okay, that's cleaning the men's room. But that day, transmitter low, 
had somebody receiving the job, I had no time to clean or to spray. I went in immediately to help with the dance ceremony. While I'm standing on the female side, that aroma got stronger and stronger in the temple. Stronger, I said, OMG. I hope that guy did not smell it. Okay, it, it was very, very offensive. Immediately after the ceremony, I ran to clean the men's room. I have never been so anxious to clean the men's room in my whole life. <laughs> it was so disgusting. Why? Because men do not pee in the urinal. They pee on the floor. I'm like animals? They are like animals. Like a dog? Yes. If you go into the men's room, anytime there's a puddle of pee on the floor. And what happens? People, people step on the pee and it is stepped all over the floor in the temple. Okay? And we put cushions on top of the footsteps in the temple. Think about that. That is gross. Yes, Johnny? Yeah, um, in the men's room, there's a sign right there. Yes. Stand closer. <laughs> you know? And so I made, yeah, I, 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 I made the sign purposely for that. So, naturally, you're going to have little tingles here and there. So, if all the men stand closer, you won't have that problem. Okay, some people say, let me not turn the light off so I can save some electricity. But they missed the target. <laughs> okay. Now think about it. Are you really saving electricity or are you wasting the people that has to clean it with the, the, the disinfectant and the time used to clean it and the water used to clean it? Think about it. Okay, and when they clean inside, they have to turn the light on. That's even longer to clean. Okay, I'm making everybody laugh, which is good. Maybe we should put a sign saying the wipe up after yourself. We, that's what it is. If you look in the female, when you tinkle and you whatever, I don't remember what I put there. Okay, please be neat and wipe the seat. Remember? We must clean up after ourselves. If we make the mess, we clean up as, after ourselves. If we are home, do we do that? No. <laughs> we are not pigs at home. So this is God's home. It is like our home. Please clean up after ourselves. The ladies also. I find poop everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I go in and say, what is that horrible smell? I'm spraying, spraying the disinfectant. I couldn't get rid of the smell. Then I went and I looked around. There was poop at the side of the toilet bowl. Yes, clean up. If you don't want to clean others' poop, you must clean up your own poop. Okay? Keep that in mind. Well, I think it's usually, it's either the, the older people or the, the kids, they, because they can't. Keep no, adults too. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, adults. Okay, so that that is you know something we must all change, okay? Because uh, it's not good to have dirty bathrooms like that. Okay, now let's talk about the kitchen. <laughs> of course, again, this is gonna gross you out. Last Wednesday, I was here, and Ty was here making his smoothie. Okay. It was, I, I was, uh, sometimes I don't even step on a stool, but this time I did. And I tried to scrub the exhaust fan. I look, I look before I touch this time. I look. There was a, a little cluster, a cluster of what? Jeez. Mouse <laughs> droppings. <laughs> so then I said, Hi, can you imagine if we are cooking a pot of soup here and somebody decide to wipe the top and did not step on a stool? All that mouse dropping will go into the soup. Think about this. And then Ty says, it won't be eight drop soup. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, no, it'll be mouse drop soup. Okay, think about this. It is gross. 
<laughs> now remember what I just said. It's not intended to 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 gross you out or to hurt anybody. Now, every week I move that. You know, there's a portable stove where the wok is. I move that stove to the side so I can clean the back. There's a whole meal there. I find tofu, mushroom, vegetables, huff and noodles, you name it, it is there. Every week. So what does that mean? You, we are all inviting all these little creatures to come in. Okay, if I'm, an, if I'm one of these creatures, I would love to live here too, <laughs> right? It's got all multi-five color foods in there. So nutritious. Right? So, people that cook must clean up after themselves. I find flower drops stuck on the door of the cabinets, never white, never white. I find vegetables stuck there, never clean. Okay. Everybody loves to cook, but nobody wants to clean. If you love to cook, you must clean thoroughly. Okay, if we go to the back, we're gonna find some mouse traps. I always peek before I walk through there. <laughs> if I see a mouse, I will scream from the top of my lungs. <laughs> That's me. I may even jump on top of the counter. <laughs> That's me, because I'm terrified. Okay, I, you know, holy teacher says if you don't want them to come to your home. You must maintain your home to be clean. Okay. Is our home clean? The home represents our heart and mind. Also our cars. So one look at somebody's car or their home, we know if this person okay, because we represent that. The home and the car must be clean. Okay? So, I also find containers open and the lid do not be replaced. So, open containers invite these little buddies to come. And I find, you know, in a, a month or so ago, they used to use these squirt bottles for the soy sauce and the oil and all that. I found cockroaches stuck there dead. I find bugs stuck on their dead. Okay. We have to, if we walk in the kitchen, we must be sanitary. Okay. So, well, it's sanitary when I'm cleaning it up. Okay. So don't worry about eating your lunch today. <laughs> okay. Because I clean it up. Okay. But you think about it. Okay. If we don't do this at home, we should not do this here. Okay? Um, if they do it at home, they do it Yes! <laughs> yeah, because I complain, I used to complain to them about how dirty the kitchen is. Do you know what they say to me? You consider this dirty? <laughs> and I said, you don't? <laughs> right? So they don't consider it dirty. I found an oil bottle, the cap wasn't on. The mouse droppings can go into the oil cap, mm -hmm. the I oil bottle. I think we should have this separate session with the people in, in the kitchen rather than, you know what I mean? So, so all right, whoever is definitely here is out of it. So we should have a separate session with them. Yeah, definitely. Just the issue. Yeah, yeah. Rather than, because a lot of people here yeah. don't work in the kitchen. Yeah. Well, we used to so, take turns working in the kitchen. So mon someday we will still take turns working in the kitchen. So, so if we work in the kitchen, we must clean up after ourselves. The, the, the other thing we should do is uh, to move on the, the cleaning on Wednesday. It's just not right. You know? No, I don't mind doing it, but, no, but you know, yeah. just to think about it, it's <laughs> gross. Yeah, it should be other people. Yeah. Yeah. Do that too. So they the understand. And then go to the kitchen. Usually, so, the Sunday people clean, Wednesday people don't. Yeah, but even the men's room area. Sunday, they don't really. I mean, even yeah. dishes, they, they, they don't clean it very well. I come every Wednesday to clean the men's room. Okay. So from the time I clean and the time if you come for the class and it's dirty, it is not because it's not clean. It is because the men dirtied it. 
Am I right, Ty? Because <laughs> he knows that I come. Okay? It's not that it hasn't been cleaned. It's because the men don't do it properly. Okay, which is not, 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 not right. Now the sink in the hallway, you know, there's a little sink in the hallway. That sink is supposed to use to clean the fruits for the fruit offering. Okay. I see people rinse their mouth in there. Oh, many times for years. I see people washing their face in there. You, they have to. They have to know that sink is only okay. So I was, I, you know, when I told them that you have to go to the bathroom for that, they said, "I wash it. It doesn't matter if you wash it or not. The sink is not for personal use. The bathroom is made for that. So make sure we do not use that sink to rinse our mouth or to wash our face. Okay." Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, say grace. Okay, when we eat vegetarian food, we must raise our food to the first treasure, and we thank God and all the Buddhas. Okay, we thank and the holy teacher said we must thank also the farmers. We never say thank you to the farmers because they plant the food for us to eat. Without the farmers, we wouldn't have all these vegetables. We must thank the cooks that prepare the meal. Okay, we must um, uh, ask the transmitters to start first, and then everyone else to start eating. Okay, now the lunch room. Every dish has a ladle. Please use that ladle to scoop our food. Do not use our personal fork. To take the food. All right. If you see someone that is doing that, say it to them gently. Not to do that. Don't just overlook it, because they have to learn. You gotta use the common ladle for that. Okay. And do not talk around the lunch table, because you know what happens when we talk. The saliva comes out. The food is already very flavored. We don't need to add more flavor to it. Okay. Holy teacher says, "Do not bring food with eggs into the temple." So when we when we mean well, want to bring something for the kids, read the ingredients. If there's no egg, you can bring, but do not bring food with eggs. And also, when we have break time. Do not eat anything. This is from the holy teacher. Holy teacher says, "Do not eat or snack on anything. You can drink beverages, but do not eat." Okay. Um, if we bring people from another temple to receive the Tao. Let's say somebody already received the Tao in another temple, but because we are very good friends with them, we want them to come to our temple. We cannot do that unless we get permission from the other person's transmitter and our transmitter. Both sides have to agree in order for us to do that. So we cannot just casually bring anybody into the temple if they receive the Tao in another temple. Okay. When in the temple, we should only speak of um, Tao matters. In other words, not you know, not uh, no gossiping, no gossiping, and no conversations to promote our own business or passing business cards around. Okay, this is a place of worship, and it's only a place of worship. Not to promote our business, and not a place of gossip. Okay, you can talk about you know personal. Hey, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Is everything okay? These things, but do not gossip about somebody else. Okay, like the holy teacher says, if it's none of our business, do not talk about it. Okay, because that is a very bad fault. 
when other people are doing the bowing, and we are stand, uh, and, and we were sitting in the same room. If people are bowing, we must get up. Respect for the Buddhas. When they finish, we can sit down. But if we want to sit, we have to go to another room to sit while they are bowing. Okay, this is common etiquette. Okay. Let's say we have a problem, um, a health problem or some personal problem that we cannot solve and we would like to ask the Buddhas to help us, okay? We can first ask the director in charge, every month is a different director, approach the director in charge, they will um, let the tra senior transmitter, okay, know and they will lead everyone to do the bowing for us, to help us. Okay, so don't be embarrassed. If it's something really, really personal and you don't want to reveal what it is, it's okay. You don't have to tell what it is. You can just say it's personal. I'd rather not say. Okay, as long as it's not that something criminal that we did, then we cannot bow for, you, for, for, for that person. Okay, cushions. When we see the cushions around, do not use our feet to kick it. Do not let the little children jump on it or sit on it, okay, or, or step over it, okay. This is a bowing cushion. So make sure we do not disrespect the bowing cushions. Okay? We also must remember all the vows we took. We all attended the Dharma class. We took at least two vows in there. We must remember what those vows, uh, what the responsibilities for these vows are. And we must make sure we can fulfill these vows. Otherwise, we cannot go back, okay? And also what the 10 great vows are, okay? Always remember our vows, never forget, okay? Any questions? No questions. Yes, Pabita. Um, what about the crossing of the legs? Holding of the oh, legs? yeah. When we are in the, the temple, we should not cross our legs. Okay. Um, I guess it's, well, because we have to be sitting upright and look dignified. If it, crossing the leg, it looks more disrespectful. Okay. So, casual, yeah. So, especially in class, do not cross your legs. Sit upright, okay? And do not go like this in class, okay? There's a proper way of lying down, okay? Okay, and when you're sitting, you don't slouch, right? Yeah. You don't slouch, you know, maybe at home, okay, yeah, on your sofa, you don't slouch or whatever, you know, but that's all, that's all, that's all, that's all, right? The four people, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very strict, it's, it's really hard, yeah, uh, it's complicated, but it's really, uh, He's funny. He, he's, he's anxious. In terms of the no pushing and touching, see, we always have a, um, a big rush here trying to get tea and coffee. See, right here is a. Um, Hot water stuff for the ladies to be able to get this. And there's hot water there too. Everybody comes over here. Hot water. There's a, a lot of supplies here, so ladies should not be coming on this side. So there's no touching and pushing and so forth. So our ladies, the English ladies, who understand that this one works, and this one over here, the fountain over there. Over there. Okay, thank you. If I did not uh, cover this topic well enough, I ask God and say to Buddha to forgive me.